This week, Colorado lawmakers introduced legislation that will forever change our state's laws regarding domestic violence. It comes after a more than year-long Denver 7 investigation into the murder of 10-year-old Ty Tesserero. Ty was murdered by his own father, and our series of reports showed how the system failed to protect him. Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kowaleski continues her reporting tonight with the changes that could impact thousands of Colorado families. Bill 1099 by Representative Ransom and Michael Cincinnati also said it looks and sounds like any other day at Colorado's capital. Recognized domestic abuse as a form of child abuse or neglect. Lawmakers talking about laws. That's Bill 1099 will be a sign of the committee. But for this mom, these words matter. I'm glad to see that they're using Ty's story and actually pushing this bill. Unfortunately, he is dead. No, no. no. More than a year since her son's murder. And after multiple interviews with Denver 7 investigates, we talked to the police. We tried to file a police report. Jing Tesserero has never stopped fighting in her son's memory, a memory she carries with her. I'll just bring it everywhere. In this small panda urn close to her heart. I feel like Ty is overwatching everything. 10 year old Ty Tesserero's father killed him. Jing's ex, Anthony Tesserero, then took his own life. A horrific murder suicide in Lone Tree back in September of 2019. Anthony, Lone Tree Police Department. It was the most horrible phone call I've ever gotten in my career. Christine Garcia was Jing's therapist. Ty's dad killed him hours after a heated court hearing where Garcia testified. I lived in fear that whole day. He was a scary individual. A hearing in Douglas County where a judge finally saw Anthony for who he really was. Add to that the desperation of a dad who was about to lose custody. The decision for him to go home with his dad that day was unfortunate, but there were so many events leading up to that that could have been done differently. Anthony Tesserero was given one. Our series of investigations uncovered a system failing to protect children like Ty and a Department of Human Services ill-equipped to manage domestic violence abusers, especially when that abuse doesn't come with bumps and bruises, as was the case with Jing and Tai. Despite multiple agencies being involved, Tai's dad continued to have coercive control or power over them both. There's issues of coercive control that are incredibly difficult to understand. A gap in the system that bill introduced at the state capitol this week now hopes to fix. House Bill 1099 will be assigned to the Committee on Public and Behavioral Health and Human Services. The bill changes the definition of child abuse to include domestic violence in state law. This is a critically important bill for the survival of our children. Members of the public. Democratic Representative Daphna Michelson Janay is one of the lawmakers backing the bill. Why does this bill matter? Because we need to be able to protect our children from domestic abuse. Without a definition, we have no mechanism for protection. This legislation would change that. It will also train caseworkers to better understand all types of domestic violence, including psychological abuse and cases of coercive control. Really specific training is necessary in this area because it's easy to make a mistake. Who's holding control over whom? And how do we protect the child? The bill will put a system in place to identify domestic abuse a system that does not currently exist for children. It has broad bipartisan support in both the House and Senate. I am very confident that we will pass this bill this year. So that there would be a consistent application of the term domestic violence. Republican lawmaker Kim Ransom also sponsored the legislation. She lives in Lone Tree. That case was within a couple miles of my home. Ransom remembers Ty's story. <laughs> There's a little boy that will never be able to grow up. Stories like yours highlighting Ty help us to see where there are holes in the system. Why is it important to you to continue fighting for Ty? I think that's this is what Ty want me to do. For Jake. Families in Colorado deserve better. And Garcia. It could mean an entirely different future for children and families. They view the bill as a step in the right direction. But there's 50 more steps that need to be taken. And they want to make sure there's follow through to fix the system that failed to protect Ty. I wanted to see the positive changes. We are raising the bar to make sure that what happened to Ty doesn't happen again. The bill goes to a House committee on Tuesday. We will watch as it makes its way through the House and Senate and keep you updated. I'm Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kowaleski.